So as Tara said, um, in following Jesus, today we're going to focus on prayer, following Jesus in our prayer life, or being a disciple of Jesus. And uh, prayer was obviously the foundation of Jesus' life and ministry. It was the foundation of everything he did. I know we, we like to have this idea that he just cruised around as the son of God and everything happened automatically. But he had to spend time in prayer. He said, I, I only do what the Father tells me to do and I only say what the Father tells me to say. That's a big statement. And how did that happen? It happened because he spent time with the Father hearing what to do and hearing what to say. And that was not automatic. He, he was the firstborn. It says Jesus was the firstborn from the dead. He's the firstborn because all of us are the, the five millionth, tenth millionth. We're all born again people just the same. And so he had to lean into the Father to know what to do and what to say. And the call on our life as followers of Jesus is the same. We need to hear from God what to do and what to say in life. And that's how we become successful. God wants successful people. We know that prayer was so big for Jesus that when the the disciples came to him one day and he just finished praying and they said, Teach us how to pray. They never asked, as far as we know, they never asked, teach us how to do miracles. They never said, um, you know, teach us how to get better in relationships. Uh, They never said things like that. They probably thought it. But what they particularly asked for was, teach us how to pray. And the reason was, is they saw the impact it had on Jesus' life and ministry, and then they saw how important it was to him to pray. And we know from Scripture that he actually sent crowds away so he could go and pray. I don't think we ever think of Jesus in that light because we have this idea, this general idea that, you know, he just wanted to be with the crowds all the time. And he did want to be with the crowds. He did want to minister to the crowds. But when he had finished that, they wanted to stay. They wanted to see more miracles. They wanted to hear more. But he said to his disciples, you get in a boat and go across the lake. And he said to the people... You go home. And he went up on a mountain to pray. So he actually sent people away so he could pray. He'd given out a lot and he needed to replenish. And the way he replenished was by spending time with the Father. So that's our example. We know when he cleansed the temple, he went into the temple and, you know, people were selling doves and, and, you know, making money. And he kicked them all out, basically. And he said, my house, he quoted an Old Testament scripture. He said, my house will be called a house of prayer. He didn't say it would be a house of miracles. He didn't say it would be a house of worship. He didn't say it would be a house of great relationships. He didn't say it would be a house of successful people. All those things are good. All those things are part of who we are and what we do, but... His number one priority was it'll be called a house of prayer. Big statement. I've got some bigger ones for you. I've got a couple of quotes here from Phil Pringle. Now, you know, Phil Pringle, the founder of the C3 movement, he says this. He says, a prayerless Christian is a powerless Christian. Wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's a slap. A prayerless Christian, now he doesn't say a prayerless Christian isn't saved, doesn't say a prayerless Christian isn't going to heaven, doesn't say a prayerless Christian isn't loved by God. He says a prayerless Christian is a powerless Christian. That's Phil Pringle. He also says this, to pray is difficult because it means getting away from those things that present themselves as urgent, important, 
and essential. To withdraw is to extricate and disentangle ourselves from the pull of a thousand and one legitimate, legitimate claims on our time and energy. We must decide well before the moment that we are going to get away and pray at all costs. To pray effectively, we need to withdraw. That's, that's tough, isn't it? To have a relationship with God, we have to spend time alone with him. Well, that makes sense, doesn't it? You know, so many people say, oh, I don't hear God's voice. Well, you know, like I would know Rick's voice anywhere, but I spend a lot of time alone with him. And until I spent time alone with him, his voice didn't stand out from the crowd. We hear someone's voice when we've spent time with that person. And so what Phil is saying here is we need to make time to spend time with God, alone with God. He said once I heard him speaking and he said uh, he learned early in his ministry how important prayer was. And he said, I'd go so far as to say it is the source of every blessing in my life right now. That's strong. That's strong. And surprisingly, Jesus says the same sort of thing. Let's have a look at what Jesus said in Matthew 6 and verse 6. He says, but when you pray, notice he doesn't say if. He says, when you pray, so it's assumed followers of, of Jesus and disciples of Jesus, it's assumed they pray. So he says, when you pray, go into your room, close the door and pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. How does God reward you when you've prayed in secret? He rewards you by answers to prayer. He rewards you by answering the prayers you have prayed in secret. We get answers to prayer when we pray. If we don't pray, we don't get answers to prayer. I know that's not deep. But usually, you know, we have to work that one out. But what Jesus is saying here, and it, and it just he's just trying to give that idea, we need to minimise distractions for a time, minimise distractions and get away alone with God. Yes. Now, for some people that might be walking along the beach. For some people that might be walking in nature through you know, a park with trees or something. For some people, it's going to a room, an office, a front room, a sitting room, somewhere that works for you. And I've heard people say it's good to, to create a place where you pray. You know, if you meet someone for coffee in a cafe, the atmosphere, you meet them regularly, it adds to that communication with that person. You've created a space it's, it's a good atmosphere. It's good to create an atmosphere for prayer. It's good to create a place where you go, where you're comfortable, where you know you won't be interrupted, and you can just spend that time with God. It doesn't have to be a huge amount of time. You know, I, I would just encourage people. Someone said this to me once, and it really helped me. They said, you need to build stamina in prayer. So often when we think, well, I, you know, I can't pray for an hour. Well, don't. <laughs> pray for five minutes. If you pray for five minutes consistently, in consistency, in consistency lies the power. Yes. You would be better to pray for five minutes every day than one hour a month. Five minutes every day. And you will find that you will build stamina in prayer. Yeah. If you've never prayed before and you pray for five minutes, you'll think it's an hour. Yeah. You'll think, I've been, I must have been praying for an hour. Oh, five minutes. <laughs> Sorry, Lord. <laughs> you know, but if you keep doing that five minutes, after about a month, you'll think, oh, man. I prayed for 10 minutes and didn't even realise. You know, and you build stamina. 
So that, and, and you know, when, when you start to get answers and things change, the things you're praying about, because as you spend time with the Father, you get to know what he wants you to pray. You get to know who he wants you to pray for. You get a knowing of what he wants to do in your life more and you know what to pray. So you're not just saying, can I have a new car? Can I have a better house? Can I have a swimming pool? You know, you're not just praying those things. You're getting the heart of the Father as you spend time with him. He gives you the desires of your heart, it says in Psalms. So he puts his desires for you and his desires for what he wants you to pray for. He puts it in your heart, so then you pray it. And it's very exciting. It's very exciting. Try it. I recommend it. Praying is very exciting because you get answers. And sometimes the answers, you just think, it's not coincidence. It couldn't have happened that way. The only way it's happened is that God has intervened in my life and circumstances or that person's life and circumstances that I was praying for. It's very exciting. Prayer is generally considered boring in any given church. It is the worst attended meeting in any given church and all the kooks go to the prayer meetings. It's generally known, all the unusual ones, they go to the prayer meeting, but that's because the enemy knows how powerful prayer is and how important it is to the life of any given church. Are you loving this, Tara? (laughs) So obviously... um, You know, in different seasons of life, you tailor that time with the Lord. I I haven't had children, but I know I've had lots of friends that have had children and their pro-life was going gangbusters till they had a baby. And then suddenly everything had to be adjusted and, and in different seasons of life, you have to, I find it, I have more time to pray now because I'm semi-retired than when I was, when I was working full time, I had to get up at like five o'clock and now I don't ever get up at five o'clock and I don't have to. So different seasons, we adjust to the different seasons of life and we, and, and it's important to respect that, I think, yes. and respect the different seasons of life. So Jesus had times, if, you, if we looked at John 17, we see an example of one of his longer prayers, I call them, one of his longer prayers. We know he, he would spend all night in prayer. I'm not suggesting you do that unless you're called to it. But he had those times with the Father where he received that strength, he received that fresh anointing, he received what he needed to then go out and minister. Now, and it's the same for us as sons and daughters. He was the son of God. We're sons and daughters of God. And we have a calling on our life to do the works of Jesus and to be his hands and feet. What makes us think that if the Son of God needed to spend time with the Father to do what the Father wanted him to do, what makes us think that we could do it differently? What makes us think that we are going to fulfill what he's called us to do without spending time with the Father, if Jesus needed to? So he spent that time. Now, he also prayed along the way. He also prayed as he was moving around. He he was praying and he prayed for people. And that's a part of our Christian walk as well. I think a lot of the time we miss opportunities Because people say to us, oh, I'm having trouble at work and my kids are doing this and something else. And you might say, oh, I'll pray about that. And the idea is you're going to take it home and you're going to pray about it next time you get in your prayer closet. And we all know what happens to that. (laughs) We forget or we don't have time in our prayer closet that day or something happens and or you just say it. Oh, yeah, I'll pray about that. But you never do. Can I encourage you not to be afraid to seize the opportunity and pray right there and then? Just say, let's pray for your kids now. 
And it doesn't have to be long. What makes a prayer effective is your faith. Your faith in what you're praying for. That's what makes it effective. Can I just give you a few examples of Jesus on the way prayers? Some of the prayers he prayed out on the road. Now, most of the time when he was ministering with people, he he didn't go into a long prayer. If, If someone needed healing, he said, be healed. If someone needed their ears opened, he said, be opened. If someone needed to see, he spoke to their eyes and said, be opened. Like he just spoke to that situation. But when he was out on the road, he did pray a couple of prayers. And I just want to give you a bit of an idea of what he said. His disciples came back and they would had a lot of miracles. And he said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, oh no, this is Lazarus, that they may believe that you sent me. 36 words. 36 words, and when he finished that prayer, he raised a man from the dead. Powerful. 36 words. Here's another one. Four words. Father, glorify your name. That was one of his prayers. And... And the father answered and said, I have glorified it, and I'll glorify it again. Four words. Four words. Here's another one. This is when the disciples came back. This is a long one, 37 words. I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this is what you were pleased to do. Just short prayers. But because he'd spent time with the Father, he didn't need to go on and on and on. He was tuned in. And he could just say a short prayer, out on the road, walking along, whatever. And it's powerful. We think, if I can't get away and, oh, intercede, groanings, camel loads of problems... You know, no. Spend that time, go out and pray as you go. And it doesn't have to be long. It doesn't have to be intense. It doesn't need to be religious. It needs to be something that you believe God wants to do for you, is able to do for you, and you can believe he will. That's the faith. Faith injected into the prayer is what God is looking for. And can I just encourage us also, you know, Scripture says we have been given the ministry of reconciliation. So that's, you know, bringing, getting people with God, introducing them in some way to the Lord, letting them know God loves them. Can I just encourage you how powerful a short on the way prayer is? You know, if you see some teenager sitting in the gutter drunk or on drugs, please don't just drive by and say, what an idiot. Drive by and say, in Jesus' name, come good, meet Jesus, have your life turned around. Amen. Just speak, you know, intercession into people. If you see people who are struggling, just say a quick prayer. Father, help them. Help them to find labourers that can cause them to meet you. In Jesus' name, amen. That is a ministry of reconciliation. We don't necessarily have to rehabilitate people, get them a fantastic job, a wife and three kids, and a fabulous house. It's not always all we have to do. It could be that just that initial prayer where you say, Lord, that person is really struggling. Please help them in Jesus' name. A quick prayer that we just say on the way. But we've spent time with the Father. So we've, we've got his heart. And we can just throw that up, uh, uh, just a quick prayer. Just sometimes when you're doing something, I, I mean, this happens to me on the computer more often than I'd like, where things aren't working out. And I'll just say, i got no idea here, Lord, can you help me? And immediately... I've never let it fail. Immediately an answer comes. Immediately he shows me what to do. Or he says, 
ring the computer guy. <laughs> you know, but short prayers. And, you know, there's a scripture that Jesus said, and I want us to look at this because you'll look at it and think, is that really in there? Matthew 18 and 19. Matthew 18 and 19 says, Again, truly I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything they ask for, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. Have you, have you ever read that before? <laughs> Isn't that an amazing scripture? Again, truly I tell you, so this is Jesus talking to his disciples and we're his disciples. I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything they ask for, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. Let me ask you something. Are we on earth? Yes, yes we are. And so sometimes when we're out and about or when we're with each other, something's going on in someone's life. Maybe they're having health issues. Maybe they're having finance issues. Take a moment to agree in prayer. I, I don't think we understand how powerful agreement is. Take a moment to just, uh, oh, wow, finances. Look, let's just agree. Father, we just agree. We agree that you will open doors for such and such to get the employment they need or you will open doors for them to get the loan they need from the bank. We just agree on it now. Breakthrough comes. There's no more blockages. We agree in Jesus' name. Wow. It goes boom. Explosions in the spirit realm on behalf of that person. Very important. Very important to agree in prayer on the spot. And don't let it go. Okay, I'm going to move along because I'm running out of time. I said to Rick, he said, how do you think you'll go this morning? I said, oh, I've got really high hopes that I'll stay within time. <laughs> so anyway, this is this, this one. Um, I want us to look at something else Jesus said in John 16, 23 and 24. And he says, in that day, you will no longer ask me anything. So he's talking to his disciples and he's kind of cueing them in, I'm actually going to be leaving you. And he says, very truly I tell you, my father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Did you know that was in there? My father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Now remember we're talking about when you've spent time with the father, you have his heart to know how to pray. So it doesn't actually apply to getting someone to agree with you and praying in Jesus' name, I want Parramatta to win the grand final. You know, no, it doesn't work like that. He says, in that day you will no longer ask me anything. Very truly I tell you, my Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Until, until now you have not asked for anything in my name. Get this. Ask, and you will receive, and your joy will be complete. Yeah. Did you know that prayer is supposed to get results? Woo. Did you know that God loves to answer prayer? Yeah. And that we're meant to pray, we're meant to get results, and it makes us joyful because we've received answers to prayer. Very important to know that God wants to answer prayer. And Jesus said... If you use my name, that's what will happen. Wow. So what's so good about Jesus' name? Well, in Philippians, it says it's the name above every name. Mm. The name of Jesus, and we sang about it in the last song, the name of Jesus is the name above every name. It's the name above debt. It's the name above disease. It's the name above broken relationships. It's the name above bad government. It's the name above war. It's the name above every name. He said, you can use that name. He said, it says, at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. Every knee will bow at the name of Jesus, whether in heaven, on earth, or under the earth. That's demons, 
that's satanic forces, everything bows to the name of Jesus. Any work of the enemy bows to the name of Jesus. And, and he says, Jesus said, you can use my name. Wow. What? A couple of years ago, Rick and I were at a family gathering and he started to develop alarming physical symptoms. His face was getting all twisted up. His eye was sort of closing. Um, he, he had taken some medication for an earache and we thought it was a reaction to that. And so we were at Stanwell Park and uh, so we decided to stop at Bull Eye Hospital on the way back. And um, so we went in there into the ED and they said, after examination, they said, it's either a brain tumour, a stroke, or Bell's palsy. And they said, but we don't know which one. You have to go to Wollongong ED to have the right, the appropriate scans. So just like, okay. So we get in the car and we drove to the Wollongong ED. This was a Saturday night. And we're sitting in the Wollongong ED at about, oh, I guess we were there from 8 till about 1 a.m. And... Um, you know, so you, you just part a couple of very many people in the Wollongong ED on a Saturday night, like it's a bit of a circus, really, <laughs> in there, the sorts of things we saw. Um, but anyway, we're in there and waiting, waiting, you know, Rick's face is all twisted up and we're waiting, waiting, and eventually we got, you know, triaged and, and then we're waiting, waiting, and then they... A doctor did take us in to a cubicle and um, he went through it all. It's either this, this or this. And uh, we'll need to do scans to know for sure. And we think this, but maybe that. And we'll need to do scans. And oh, we're not sure when we can do a scan. Um, uh, you might have to come back tomorrow for the scan. And, um, and then Rick did something that I thought, oh, I can't believe you did that. He said, out of the blue, he said... Uh, my brother-in-law works in the hospital. And they're like, oh, yeah, you know, everyone's got someone who works in the hospital. He said, his name is, and he said our brother-in-law's name. Our brother-in-law is very high up and very influential in Wollongong Hospital. And we're not normally names droppers, but Rick dropped his name. <laughs> Immediately, everything changed. Immediately, scans were organised. We went out into the waiting room. The doctor came out to us to tell us very quietly what was wrong and, uh, and suggested medication. Oh, don't, don't stop on the way home. We've got some free medication for you here. And it was all because we used our brother-in-law's name. He wasn't... <laughs> He has told us, you can use my... He told us, because we had to go in for something else once when Rick injured his hand. He said, I give you permission to use my name. And we've pulled that lever about five times in the last seven years, and it works every time. And that's just our brother-in-law at the doctor. Imagine the name of Jesus. And he said, you can use my name when you pray. So it, when we use Jesus' name, the Father hears it as though Jesus himself was praying it. Yes. It's very powerful. Very and it, these things, as followers of Jesus, he has paid a huge price for us to have this privilege. And um, so I just encourage you, I encourage you to just take it seriously and don't let it go. This, musicians, this I am wrapping up. <laughs> um, just in summary, to spend that time alone, and like, if you can only do five minutes, just do it. Yeah. But do it, do it often. Pray along the way. Yeah. Agree with someone. Intercede for people that you see are suffering. You, you don't necessarily have to talk to them yeah. unless you get the opportunity. And use the name of Jesus in your prayers. Amen. Okay, Tara.